Thank you very much, Samuel. And first of all, I would like to thank all the party for organizing this event and for inviting me to take part of this discussion together with Evan, with Evan. And of course, with my colleague and friend, Dita, that you know, and you have heard, he's one of the first MEP in the parliament that uh, started to talk about the uh, artificial intelligence and not just to talk, to show what it is and how it can, could be the future of this of this new new topic, but it is an, an enormous pleasure for me to be here with you today. In order not to just to talk about something that will be something important in the future, because it's not at all. It's not the future. We are talking about the present, like artificial intelligence is and becoming a reality. Artificial intelligence has enormous applicability and the benefits in several sectors and industry. However, where we are talking about the future of mobility and the automotive industry, artificial intelligence plays a crucial role in this moment. In understanding the impact of emergency technologies on the transport sector, the application based on artificial intelligence are absolutely fundamental. It will drive the application that will transform transport, the mobility choices of people, and the organization of freight transport. Because we always talk about transport and air, air transport, but we several times we, for, we forgot about talking about freight, and it's absolutely important. And obviously, in this moment of pandemic or crisis situation, cooperative cooperative intelligent transport system, connected cooperative automatic mobility. Mobility as a service, is, uh, in, in fact, and self-organizing logistics are identified as the most promising smart mobility application in the period of the 2030, because we have to, to, to look forward in the next 10 years, because uh, time goes so fast, so fast that we have to take uh, different steps. And the first step is 2030. For all these applications, artificial intelligence is absolutely fundamental. Furthermore, the COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our mobility choices can change sustainability and substantially in the moment. The crisis has accelerated the need for a digital infrastructure and mobility innovations. The, the development of different emerging, emerging uh, technologies, such as uh, in this case, the artificial intelligence promotes innovation in smart mobility. Moreover, the increasing pressure on achieving sustainability goals within the transport sector will be another driver, very important driver for the development of that smart mobility. When we're talking about mobility and logistics, of course, the amount of data is increasing rapidly and the complexity of the control of vehicles, transport chains or transport network is now expected to grow, but to grow absolutely rapidly in this moment. As a result, with manual planning or simple data analytic methods, it would not be possible to make optimal choices. That's what we had to, to, to think rapidly in artificial intelligence. Therefore, artificial intelligence solution has a potential to support humans to deal with a large amount of data and the complexity of control in real time situations. Because we had, uh, or, Many, many things we had to say that we had to, we had the need of uh, we had to, to be helped by somebody, uh, a part of us. But our human brain is absolutely incredible. We can do nothing without that. It's, it's, it's suddenly, and the, the new perspective is just we are using a very, very small average or percentage of our brain, but we can do nothing just by ourselves. We need something more. This is what artificial intelligence needs to become a reality, but using the data, because we nowadays without data, we are nothing, but we need how to manage this data. And this is important. There are, however, still many challenges to implement smart mobility application in a way that maximizes the benefits for Europe at the same time that minimize the negative impacts that we are hearing every day especially in media, in some media. Lack of harmonization in national legislation and lack of social acceptance are the just two examples of issues that should be addressed by the EU level. Dear friends, I don't want to use more time because I think the very important things are the discussion, but in the light of all, I have to say, that, and I would, be, I would like to conclude by congratulations here in the Crandall 
and its office in Berlin by this huge contribution to promote the new technologies and not only by uh, in artificial intelligence, but in the transport sector and mobility. I have been, it has been a pleasure to, to hear uh, Edwin in his speech to know how is it the evolution. And we have to know that we can do nothing without this partnership between the public institutions and the private investment. And it's absolutely, absolutely important because we can have the legislation in our hands, but you have in the perspective of the private uh, investment, you, know, you have the knowledge, you have the experience, you have the expertise, you have the, 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 the fast way to go forward. And we have, of course, to legislate to be sure that everything will be in the right side. But we have to work together Obviously, more, no more, more than ever. And with your expertise, with rich uh, research and innovation, you contribute more than ever to the future of the sector. And this is what to say. Thank you, thank you so much to you. And we, as a member of the parliament and the public representatives, we must accompany the sector and help you in this technological process by creating level security, legislative support, and obviously, financing. We need to promote digitalization in Europe to other development of the technology that makes a real difference between what is happening and, and let people know what is happening daily in our lives. A strong and com uh, a competitive economy the master, that masters and shapes technology in a way that respects European values. And this, in this aim, Hyundai and the entire industry committed to promote digitalization will always find in ALDE and of course in the, the new, new group, the liberal group, a partner to work within in order to achieve our goals. And then I have to, I have to finish. Yes, at the same way I have started my small, my, my brief speech. I just thank you so much to all the to all of you for, for inviting me to this uh, to this uh, webinar and of course to all the people who is connected and trying to have a, a list to know what is happening in the European institution. Thank you so much.